In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I think and why I think it in a live online inside the mind gameplay of Rags in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about how you can become the best Madden player that you could possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you right now to click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It is completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now as I said, I am going to be breaking down kind of what I think in a live online head-to-head -head regs matchup of Madden 21. So we're going to be breaking kind of down, uh, walking you through some of my thought process and just kind of what I'm seeing as I'm seeing it. Now, if you want to get either the offense or the defense that I'm running in this gameplay, is both of them are going to be linked in the description. So my full offense and my full defense are both going to be uh, in the description of this video. As you can see right here, my offense is the gun bunch out of the New York Jets offensive playbook. And uh, again, you can get the entire offense down in the description. I like to play fast and I like to play simple. My basic thought process in terms of how I kind of call plays and things like that is I like to use essentially an 80-20 analysis. So I like to simplify and kind of keep my offense down to about five to 15 play calls that I'm gonna really focus in on. And flood is really the first of those play calls. So when I come out any game, this is the play that I must make go. This is the play that I will make go. And this is the play that I wanna run again and again and again. And so if I can establish this passing concept, I'm going to try to do just like just that. As you can see, we're four or four for 60 yards opening up. And like I said, if you wanna get the entire gun bunch offensive guide it is in the description the uh, nickel 335 wide defense that i'm going to be running in this video is also down in the description as well so you can get both of those now i'm going to be going to my little red zone setup here my opponent's been running a lot of zone coverage here um, in the red zone so i'm going to go to a little bit of a red zone setup here this is primarily if my opponent uh, decides to go zone coverage and he does and we're going to hit aaron jones in the back of the end zone for a reservation for six. Now, one thing you want to do, especially if you are, you know, if you get the ball first, you want to go ahead and make sure that your coaching adjustments are all set up before you kick your field goal. Just helps a little bit with the defensive side of things and just kind of saves you a few seconds as you get those pre-snap or pre-first um, possession adjustments in. Now, uh, defensively, I am still running the 3-3-5 wide. I believe it is the best defense in the entire game for several reasons but the main reason is that it can do all five of the key elements that i think it takes to be effective defensively the first one is the ability to stop the run the second one is the ability to play match defense at a high level the third one is the ability um, to play zone drop coverage the fourth one is the ability to play solid man-to-man -man coverage and then the fifth one is the ability to have pressure that you can basically run through all three of those or all several of those uh, adjustments and so one little quick tip really quickly here is I'm gonna pause the game and then I'm just gonna hit circle like literally just immediately back in and what's gonna happen is if you look at the bottom right there you saw that my clock was getting a little bit lower and it, as you can see right there I'm now back up to where I want to be so that gives me just an extra adjustments or extra time so that I can set my pre play adjustments now uh, the defense that I'm running in this video is my uh, like I said my nickel three through five wide defensive guide you can get the full defense in the description and really I run it very similar to the way that I play offense I like to have a base call I like to have something that I can kind of start with um, just to kind of feel it out just to kind of see what's happening and for me the the defense that I want to spend the most of the game in is indeed the cover four quarters out of this um, the cover four show two out of this right here now as you can notice um, he's running the ball a little bit here on me uh, to start looks like, looks like power O is going to be his go-to play so we need to blow that up but here he is going to go to the air we've got quick slants across and unfortunately he is going to be able to hit me um, if he would have low pass that I might have had that right there I should have saw that coming um, but, but uh, good good play call by him one of the other things that I do like to do from time to time and I don't go to nickel normal a ton but if I want to run something that is kind of similar to the big nickel over G I just use the nickel normal and the reason why is because the personnel that you get from the 335 wide is so, um, or I apologize, the 335 normal is so significant. It's what makes the 335 wide, in my opinion, really the best defense in the game. There's a lot of things that make it really, really effective. One of those things is its ability to be able to basically always put the best personnel possible on the field. Now, as you can see here, um, and I need to go to my 
Uh, run defense, and I just messed up on it there. I just messed up on my run defense. This guy is it, it's basically what we're going to do is we're going to quick snap uh, power O. And again, if you play online at all, you're going to run into this kind of stuff. This is kind of like, you know, this is just America's offense. Roll out, throw quick slants. Um, you know, I don't know how he completed that with man coverage on him, but that seems to be this guy's strategy. So you're going to see that I'm going to spy both of my safeties. I'm going to bring this, you know, defense really, really down heavy and, uh, and just try to blow this up down in the red zone. Now, you know, really the, the goal of my defense in a nutshell is what we really want to do is we want to try our best to force our opponent to take field goals, uh, as opposed to the ability, giving him the ability to, to oftentimes go down and score. And so that's where this, you know, run defense is really really important for that and that's ultimately why i believe the 335 is so effective because it just does a really really good job uh, at run defense it really does it is truly uh in my opinion one of the most you know just simple but effective uh ways to play run defense so like right here you know we're going down and we're going to kind of shift around a little bit uh trying to just blow that up in the backfield there the run defense holds and that's gonna bring up fourth down. Now he has a decision to make. He ran power O about 15 times on that drive. It looks like he is definitely gonna go back to it again on this play. Um, now I also have a decision to make a little bit here, but I'm gonna stick with my run defense and hope that I can stop it. Uh, we're actually gonna pinch our defense here, really come down on the on the opponent, because um, we're expecting that inside run. He's able to get it right there. And that was honestly a little bit of a mistake by my on my part. I should have shifted my defensive line to the left or to the right. I ended up keeping them in the middle. And uh, he is able to score a touchdown running the exact same play uh, all the way up the field, which is honestly, to be fair to him, um, that's what I was doing. It's just the difference is I was passing and he was running. He's obviously found a run that is going to give me a little bit of trouble. And so I've got to be more effective next time at getting that stopped. I think the quick slant, um, the ability to throw the ball to the running back when he's completely man covered was absolutely ridiculous. So you can't be too mad at that. Um, you have to adjust and move forward. Obviously, it looks like that's his offensive plan is to run quick slants and run power O. At least that's what he's shown us so far. And so we're going to have to basically lock in and be able to stop that because it's not, you know, again, you can, you can complain about it, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it's his defense, it's his scheme for a reason. Um, so anyway, so we're going to shift back to offense. Now offense is, you know, one of the things here is that we do need to keep scoring. You know, we, we do need to keep scoring. So we're going to force, you know, again, we're just going to stick with flood, kind of do what we do and, uh, and just kind of work the ball up and down the field here. There it is again, a little quick flat. Get up field for about six yards. We're seven of seven for 73 yards, and we're gonna move fast. We're gonna play fast. One of the things too is that if you can get really good at flipping your bunch, um, specifically, you there's obviously reasons. There's multiple reasons as to why you would want to flip your bunch. One of those reasons um, is for this right here. You notice that he doesn't. You see that right there. Now he did flip on that time, or at least the guy ran the direct opposite direction. They won't always do that. Okay, they won't always do that, and so it can give you a plus one advantage on the bunch side, on the three wide, um, if you can get good at flipping the bunch. You know, flipping the bunch is actually something that I think is super super underrated. Um, you know, some you don't have to flip it every play, but there is definitely, especially if you're playing someone like this guy right here, who's basically just essentially letting the, the computer, oh, look at that move. Oh, look at that move. Oh, I just had one, ah, oh, I just messed up. Man, that was almost a really good move right there. But um, anyway, so you see here, I'm putting the option route out there and then I'm just quickly flipping the play. It's gonna leave, if he goes to zone, you see that that's, that corner's on that side. That tells me, literally I knew before the ball was snapped that he was in zone coverage just based on alignment, just because of that little flip trick that you can do. And, and that's the simple, little subtle things that you can do that you know Gun Bunch allows you. So like you see here, this time he goes with him Okay, so now I know, and then you see how you move back to the left there. That tells me he's in zone coverage. So that's how I know. Uh, right here, we're going to kind of step up, slide in the pocket a little bit. And that's okay. That's that's decent pocket presence. Um, right here, we're going to try to get a base off just real quick here. Just kind of try to pop one before the two-minute warning uh, just to give us a little bit of extra time that hopefully he makes a mistake. He ends up not. And that's going to put us in a, in a little bit of a pickle. Uh, third and five, we're going to go to our red zone play out of mesh post. Um, now, there's multiple ways to run this. And again, it's a lot of this is based off of how does he, you know, how is he adjusting out of the snap? What is he doing? Um, you know, one of the things as you can see right here is we're going to run, we're going to set up some hitches on the right here, um, just kind of anticipating some zone coverage. He goes to zone coverage and the running back standing wide open in the end zone for a reservation for six. And, you know, we just kind of honestly, what we should have done is we should have come out and flipped a bunch again so that we can get that manner zone tell. But 
Um, anyway, we did see zone coverage, and so we're able to we're able to convert and we're able to get down and get seven. So now defensively, the focus shifts back to the defense. Now our opponent does get the ball at halftime, which is very good for him. Um, if he goes down and scores here, and then he gets ball at half, he could potentially go up by one possession. So this is actually a very important drive for me. And this is coming back to my whole philosophy on defense. And my whole philosophy on defense is essentially is essentially that I want to basically force my opponent to have to take a field goal as opposed to just letting them get touchdowns. That's all I want to do. I don't really care if they drive on me. What I care about is that we, you know, at the end of the day, we force them to have to take a field goal as opposed to a touchdown. So like right here, a um, little check down to the right there. It's actually a good read by him. And as you can see, I mean, it's just quick slants all day. That's what we're going to do. And so, um, you know, this is something where it's a little bit early to do this. But due to the way that he's kind of playing, we're just going to use a rush him right at the gap here, just because he's kind of being a little bit of a little bit of a goon with the way he's playing. Um, that's that that's that ability to send pressure. Um, and now what you're going to see, and I didn't get everything off little on the proper, and he's going to have that slant wide open over there. I was hoping Jair could get out there, but unfortunately we weren't able to do that. And I mean, literally, we're just going to snap the ball as quick as humanly possible. And so what we're going to do right here. Um, we're actually going to shift uh, just because of the way he's playing. We're going to try to use rush him again, uh, or not even use rush him, but they get that right there. We drop an interception, but that's kind of, you know, when they start doing stuff like that where they're very predictable in what they're doing, um, you kind of know that, you know, something like a user rush, something like this can really, really hurt them. Um, and so like right here, we're just getting a little bit aggressive. Now, we don't want to be too aggressive. We really don't. So like in this situation right here where he pretty much has to throw it. And again, it's just quick snapping slants. That's all we're doing. Um, so he's going to try to throw it over here to the left side. I don't know how he was able to complete that. Um, I probably should honestly just sit in man coverage. Um, I think just the way this guy's playing, but he's literally just snapping the ball so freaking fast. Like he's making this stupid concept so effective, but and, and, and somehow he's down inside the five yard line. I mean, this is this right here is the reason why people get, you know, the reason why honestly metas exist um, is because of what the way this guy's playing offense really. So we're gonna go to this little three, three, five style defense here. And the reason why um, is just because we're gonna try to stop the slants. I mean, he's, this is all he's running. I think cover two does a decent job against this kind of offense. So we're gonna go to that in this example. I'm going to throw a little mid read out there instead of a hook girl. Uh, I think he wants to run the ball. He's probably going to try to run it and then call timeout. Nope, he's going to go quick slants. That's his play. That's his favorite little play. So he's going to roll out, roll out, roll out. He's going to probably throw it up. And he runs out of bounds. Now, uh, we also remembered we also remember that the user rush gave him some trouble. So we're going to go back to that real quick here. Uh, right up the A-gap, just get right back in there on him. Force him to have to, you know, again, now the, now the clock's going to tick a little bit. It's third and 15. Uh, as you can see, you know, we've got him in a good position. We just have to stop quick slants, literally. Just stop quick slants. Just stop quick slants, and we somehow drop another interception. And at least we did our job to be able to force him to take a field goal. I've never played somebody like this. This guy is literally running the same two plays every single every single play. Uh, what we're going to do right here, this is honestly a very, very aggressive but just the way this guy's playing, I don't think he can get the read off. He's not able to do it. We get the user sack. He's obviously going to call a timeout. He's probably going to complain that I'm user rushing him. But the problem is this guy's literally running the same two plays every single play. Now, we know from personal experience, if you take a look at what he's doing here, this is where Jets dig can be a very good play call. We've kind of lulled him to sleep a little bit with flood. He, we noticed that he ran cover three that one time. Um, and so we're just going to hope that he's in cover three. He might not be. Uh, we're just going to hope that he is in man. And he is actually a man to man coverage. Unfortunately, we're just gonna have to throw the ball away and go to half, but we're okay getting out of half by that and that's fine So overall pretty good first half we we just I've never seen someone run quick slants this much in, in combination I mean, this is just a crazy little offensive scheme here um, You know, it's, this is this is the reason I say this is why metas exist is because what happens is people want to stop People don't want to have to deal with this stuff And so essentially what a meta is is something that can basically just stop it like you can just literally stop it um, So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna shift my focus here a little bit and I'm gonna go to a 15-5 and five zone drop. It's where I talk about the ability to play zone drop. So he is going to shift down into the Trey Y flex. So he might actually uh, have a little bit of a different strategy as far as how he's going to play. But we're going to stay with the same kind of thing. There's the crosser. We know we got to follow the crosser. 
And okay, so that's just this guy is literally just gonna. I mean, he's just he, it's like he literally logged onto YouTube to type in money play, and that's what his offense is. So, uh, we're actually gonna shift if so. Now we know if he's Trey Flex, it's gonna be pay crossers. Um, yep, this is this literally is what he's done. He, he's, he's probably literally gone onto YouTube and just googled money play, and he's just got a series of like probably five. This is where I'm gonna and I'm gonna come back to this in just a moment because this is a very, very um, annoying style of, of way to play this game. And I'm going to talk about why it's so annoying and what the problem is with it. So when I talk about, you know, what I really want for you guys as you're watching this is I want you to be able to call plays, but I want you to actually have a purpose as to why you call what you call. What this guy is doing is literally what he's done is he's literally just looked up on YouTube money play and he's just throwing them like he's just running the plays. So it's like, OK, well, I, I that my first money play stopped working. So I'm going to go to my second money play and my third money play, my fourth money play. They're from different formations. All I have to do as a defensive player is just play kind of standard defense. And I'm eventually going to force a turnover like I just did. I won't always like he'll get me some. But for the most part, like I can shut this down really without having to really try. Um, and that's that's the point of being more focused, being more intentional. You notice that he he is going between cover two man, cover three, and cover two, but he's just calling the plays. He's not actually adjusting anything. He's just calling stock coverages. That's what I'm talking about. So when I say to you guys what I want for us as a as a channel is I want you to call plays that actually have a point. You're not just calling this money play to this money play to this money play to this money play, but you're calling this play and you know that they have to do these two to three things to stop this play. And then based off of those two to three things that they can do, it leaves them vulnerable to this other play. That's the cat and mouse game. That's the cat and mouse game of Madden. Running money plays over and over again will work some, but it will not work forever. And it will not work against anyone that knows what they're doing on this on this game. And so that's kind of why, um, that's the whole purpose of, of really the power, you know, the five, five plays for success on both sides of the ball. Uh, for offense, it's a power play, a counter play, a constraint theory play, a running play, and then a red zone play. And then for the defensive side of the ball, it is um, run defense. Uh, um, I apologize. Uh, run defense, match defense, zone defense, and blitzing defenses. And I mean, as you can see, we we've literally not had to we've not had to get out of our power play. And the reason why we've not had to get out of our power play is because he's not adjusted to stop it. He's done nothing to stop the play. He's not set his zone drops. He's not adjusted. He's not putting things on the field. And so it makes a very, very simple, easy win for me, but you have to embrace the boredom if you're going to be effective at it. You'll, if, if you're like me, you just kind of want to call stuff just to call stuff, right? Um, the important part is execution, execution, intentionality. Those are things that are going to really win you ball games. What this guy's doing right here, and you're going to see him do it again, it looks like, he's just going to formations. He has no clue what works. He's just calling stuff. This is stock stick. The guy literally just ran stock stick on me, and I totally could have picked that off, and I messed up because I was complaining about what his office. But that's what I'm getting at. This is the reason why my guides are so important. This is the reason because it teaches you how to actually do it. You, you're not just going to call random stuff. So that's the whole purpose behind you know pretty much everything we're doing on YouTube, but but especially um, especially with the ebooks and stuff. If you want to and if you want to get one of those, that's in the description. But I mean, look, he rolls out every single play. Now he's going to playmaker this guy. Like this is just crazy. The fact that he's completing this is even crazier. But. I mean, it's just his offense. It's, it, it is what it is. So anyway, because of the way he's playing here, uh, we're going to shift back to just kind of standard match coverage. And again, this is talk about adjustments and all that. And um, He's going to roll out again. There. There. I don't know how I got. Oh, I don't know how I didn't get a pick. But like, I don't even think he's hot routed one time. I guess what he's doing is he's crossing, he's crossing the slants every time. So um, now this is where, this is where people like Noah up next understand defense a little better than I do. So 
like what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just kind of shift into a standard little Mabel coverage for the way that this guy's playing. And the reason, primary reason as to why is just because the way he's playing, I mean, and of course he's gonna hit us at the seams. That's so frustrating. The seam flat did not do its job because we put the seam flat at five yards. We would put that seam flat at 15, it would have stopped him. The fact that he just scored on us is oh, it's frustrating. But basically, and we really should be playing cover six, actually. We shouldn't be playing cover three. The reason you want to play cover six as opposed to cover three is so that you don't is so that it, it you don't get what just happened to me. The seams can't be attacked as well in cover six because on the wide side of the field you have an inside quarter zone. And on the short side of the field you have a deep half. It's harder to attack the seams on the short side than it is on the wide side because there's just not enough room. Um, and so that's where the that's where the idea of a cover six it all comes back to spacing where can they actually attack based off of where they're at on the field and that is actually a very very powerful little point that most people don't really consider when they when they call defenses they just call defenses because well you know they've got to call something but they they might as well like the way this guy's playing defense he he would be better off if he just asked bad in every play like he truly would be better off because watch it's either cover two man coverage or cover three like that's it that's what he does there's no adjustments whatsoever so like right here you'll see right there the laser over the middle of the field uh, i thought i was going to have a touchdown now this is a great time to go to a little bit of a counter play just to kind of see we've we've ran flood every single time we could continue to run flood but based off of what he just did defensively i think i could hit r1 over the top here and of course i I don't know what he's doing on that on that guy but he's got to be doing something the fact that we just you know the fact that we just gave him the satisfaction of having a, a sack is just crazy it's bad pocket by me trying to force it down the field trying to score and this is this is where i say you have to embrace the boredom when you're playing somebody that you are clearly better than you don't have to you you don't have to beat them into the ground just fundamentally beat them. The methodical dot after dot after dot after dot is much, much more demoralizing than, the, than you scoring one play. 100% way more demoralizing for a defense to give up a long drive than and, and a consistent easy read after easy read after easy read is way more uh, difficult for that than, than the basic, you know, I'm just going to dominate you. I'm just going to dot you every single time um, that is much, much more demoralizing than scoring in one play. So um, we're going to commit to that a little bit. Until he stops flood, we will run flood. Until he stops flood, we will run flood. Very, very consistently. Little low ball right there, secure catch. Very consistent read. The reason we can do that is because we know he's not adjusting the zone drops. He's not bringing the yellow zones down. So you can low ball little hitches and things like that all game long. There's really nothing that they can do. And of course, as soon as I say that, I throw a stupid boneheaded interception. And I knew he was doing that lurk too. I had R1 wide open. He's done that same movement every single time. And this is where I talk about it. I talk about, it. I mean, this, this guy is literally, literally the scum of the earth for how he plays Madden. It, it's, you ask anybody that plays, this guy is very, very frustrating to play. And what happens is when you don't embrace the boredom, it's really easy to just kind of, you know, get frustrated and start doing stupid stuff like what I just did. That's why I talk about you have to embrace the boredom. You have to embrace the boredom. I should have never thrown that ball over the middle of the field. I had, I got almost through an interception earlier in the drive on the same exact thing. I've got to consistently hit that read. And that's just, you know, again, it's just a, it's just a learning experience. Everything's a learning experience. But anyway, right here, we're going to send some pressure at our opponent. And he's, you, you know, we're just going to go back there and say, you know, what, no more. Like no more, you sit down. Like sit down. You need you need to come up with something else. Your little play action play is not going to work. Now what I'm going to do right here, um, I really really want to user rush him, and we're going to do that. He's going to hit me over the top. I knew that was coming too. Oh. Oh man, and I ran right by the ball. Like this is just such a I mean the this guy is EA Sports is what you, you know, this is where you want to say like EA Sports, what are you doing, you know? We're going to take a timeout. This is a bad, that's a bad timeout. It's a bad timeout, but the way that he's calling his plays um it's just so like quick snap, quick snap, quick snap. It's you don't want to risk it. You just need to get your adjustments on the field. 
Force him to have to do something. I mean, force him to have to do something. Like, I don't know why Zadarius Smith. I don't know what Zadarius Smith is doing this game, but he's not. Uh, he's not getting in for me. Run some pressure again. I don't know how the blue route got out there. We should. That shouldn't have happened. Okay, so we've got so the ball is on like the seven yard line. This is where again you start to adjust a little bit. So you're gonna go fifteen five and five. Uh, once you get down here in the red zone like this, and what you should see from me is you should see you should see cover six. Cover six is the move here, um, especially with his play style. And he's just basically being desperate. You know, he's just desperate for the run to work. I'm gonna pause or uh, I'm gonna time out there. I'm having the hardest time getting my adjustments to like register. Gosh, that's on me too. Oh, that's on me. When you're playing uh, red zone defense, I think it makes a lot of sense to, I mean, there's a lot of things that make, like the fact that this is a game is so frustrating. Like so frustrating, the fact that this is a game. I mean, this, uh so irritated um we just have to clutch up and go get three and just put the game away um what i was gonna say about uh, the red zone defense and you know here just and this is where you know what i mean it's like one of those things where you can like try to and when you get when you play someone like this it really really frustrates you um one of the things that you run the risk of doing is you run the risk here and if you watch he'll click off he'll go off yep goes right off of him and then that's wide open um one of the things that you run the risk of doing especially with the way this guy's playing his style is you run the risk if you're not careful of you know basically and here i should have a touchdown like this you're trying to score in one play it's like right here i score in one play now if you if you look at the problem this is a problem that's created so this guy the way that he's playing the game Right, I want to enforce by dominance, so I just want to score them in one play every time. Now look at what we've done. We scored, and I shouldn't have done that. I just want to show, but now that I did that, I just want to show you what happened. So now I shouldn't have thrown that. I should have put the guy on a hitch. The reason why is because now I've got to play defense. I just want to take a field goal and get out of the ball game. Right? Do you want to win or do you want to like enforce it? You know, you want to just win. So I should have just simply taken you know my three points got out of the game and, and moved on. But because I'm a stubborn person, right? Um, now we've got to actually play defense. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go, you know, just go to this defense right here. The way he's playing is so just, I mean, it's just weird. Um, so uh, wide side of the field, we're going to do that. Short side, we're going to do that. So we basically are running cover six. That should be a, a pick. We three people right there. Uh, but basically what we're going to shift to is essentially cover six. So on the wide side of the field, we want, and right here, you know, there's not a wide side, which is fine. Uh, but this is kind of what we want right here. So you see, we've got cover six. We practically have cover six cross um, right there. Of course, I've got this deep, deep zone that I've got to go back to. I don't know what just happened. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And of course he so like right there he dives down. Why? Because he's gonna go for two. Like this is this is this is just typical. This is the this is just crazy. Like this is just crazy to me. And all of this, you know, at the end of the day, all of this is probably honestly my fault. Um what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna go down. He just wants to take some clock. We want him to score, and that's fine. And now we're in the same situation we were just in. Now we are literally in the same situation we were just in. We have to be careful because if I was him, I'd be going for two right now, right? But I didn't waste my time out, which was a smart decision. But now I've got to go down and get three. I've got to go down and get three. And now I've got to press it all because I was too stubborn and wanted to make a point, right? He ran PA deep outs. He got the, I don't even know what happened on the, on the, on the play other than it's a cover four beater, but 
we've got to be better than what we've played. We we've played terribly in terms of game management. We play we've made really really poor adjustments defensively. Like so, it's not a great game. We're still in a position where we can go win the game, and that's what we need to do. So again, you know, the guides are going to work for you as much as you can master the play calling. So I'll give you the way to master the play calling. But uh, you've got to ultimately master the guide. So, anyways, we're gonna go to mesh post here, um, just because of how he's playing. I mean, he's playing, he's playing zone every play. You've got to be kidding me. Um, wow, wow. This is the kind of stuff that makes you want to retire. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Oh, this guy's actually going to win this game. Please pass the ball. Please. I'm desperate for you to pass it. And we got him. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe we're going to get out of this with a win. Oh, man. What a game. Oh, my gosh. All right. Now, question. Do you score? No, you don't. You take your. You take it here. Okay, and then what you do, this is my opinion, I go I go fullback dive, and the reason why is just because it, a touchdown wouldn't hurt hurt us that bad. Um, like you see, we get a touchdown. He's got twenty five seconds. I mean, he's got twenty five seconds, right? Like if you if you can't stop him for twenty five seconds and you got to get him for seven. You you don't deserve to win like and we didn't we 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 killed ourselves like the fact that We just did not have a good game. We did not have a good game um, but You know the scheme still did come through we got the interception on the vertical play we got you know I mean it it was fine. It just like I've just never played more of a just crazy person like, This is just crazy the way this guy plays Oh man, too old for this, guys. So basically, if they run a crosser, that's me. Please pick the ball off. Yeah, so basically, what we're going to do, what I like to do against like a, a set like this. This is a little bit of a new thing that I like to do, but I really like this. Like, just basically inside quartering everybody. He's got his one little route that's not going to work against man. See, this is right. The, the biggest mistake I made defensively is I don't think I ran enough man coverage. Like, if I would have just ran man coverage, I think it would have been easier to stop him. Just, yeah, just the quarters. And the reason I like the quarters, they play the inside really, really good. Like, if he wants to run, that's fine. I'm not just, yeah, I'm just going to let that go. Now, right here, one thing I don't mind doing, especially with the way that he's playing, we're going to shade over top. But basically, we have to watch the post. Just put a pressure on him. Yep, just take him. Just take him down. Um, and the reason why is just because we just want to let him know, like, if he wants to continue to do this, like, we can totally. Just put the pressure on him. We're going to go right back here. That's exactly where we knew we needed to get to. We're just going to let him, you know, somehow he miraculously catches the ball. Craziest game of Madden I've ever played. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. I should have ran way more main coverage. If you want to get the defense or the offense I ran in this video, um, you can obviously probably run it better than I ran it in this video. But the setups, the core of the scheme is available in the description. My full bunch offense and my full um, 3 3 5 wide defense. The bunch offense actually comes with a bunch tight end and bunch and trips tight end offset. Thanks for watching. And, uh, man, hopefully we don't play anybody else like that. That was a crazy, crazy game.